Um, hi everyone, my name is Lana and I'm a technical writer at JetBrains. Um, our company is mostly known by our developer tools like IntelliJ IDEA or PyCharm, but we are also developing a new product for writing the technical documentation inside your IDE, which is called WriterSite and where I actually work at. And today I will tell you about our sort of experiment that we ran during the internal hackathon. Um, we tried using domain-specific languages, specifically Kotlin DSL, to write in API documentation and documentation in general. So how it all started, we and like my fellow colleagues participated in the internal hackathon. Um, it takes place at JetBrains uh, every year and it's this is a sort like safe space for experiments when you can apply anything to the company products or to the company in general. So this is not a new idea. We just inspired from the many uh, times in many languages like PHP or like, for example, Android, um, where they try to generate the HTML or XML from code. Uh, but we have gone much further with um, this idea. Um, so let's uh, be on the same page first and uh, let's give it a definition. Um, DSL is basically a programming language with a higher level of abstraction optimized for a specific domain. Um, it should like it uses the concepts and rules from the field domain and there are a few types of DSLs. Um, first type is so-called external or general purpose DSLs, uh, which is basically a separate language. It has its own syntax, lexer, parser, and it's like basically a separate language with um, custom features. You can't just take and extend it, um, but it's recognized but by any like editors or um, IDEs. Uh, and the example of such DSL is, for example, SQL and um, others as well. Um, but an alternative approach is when you like mix the DSL code and general purpose language. So the DSL, internal DSL specifically, they are leaning onto the host language. It uses its grammar, syntax and parser. It uses host language features. Um, the term internal DSL is used to describe such scenarios. So the Kotlin DSL is an example of an internal DSL. Um, and the issue with internal DSLs usually is that ID don't know this DSL because you made it up uh, and don't provide support like error checking. But in case of Kotlin DSL, it knows because it's Kotlin, like which is basically a programming language. Um, so what we have tried to make is to make an internal DSL that can act as external with all the like ID support. So how it basically works, and I have a disclaimer here, I'm showing you an approach, not like a particular implementation, because in our case, we're generating our own semantic XML based markup, um, but the result can be any, it can be like HTML, docx, you name it. And I will show examples in IntelliJ IDEA, but you can use any editor or even run this in the command line. Um, so please don't focus on the particular implementation. I want just to show you an approach. So these are like simple examples of how our DSL look like. So it looks simplistic and it does not look like writing actual code, Kotlin code. So as entities in DSL, we use semantic uh, elements such as chapters, procedures, tables, paragraph lists, and more. Um, our DSL implements document model where you manipulate with documentation building blocks and then you can extend it with some custom elements if it's necessary. So uh, on each example, you will see like this P list and other elements. These are like invocation of a container and like plus uh, or a string or adding some data there um, is an assertion of the content into the uh, this container. So you will see it like these are simple examples. And then when I will proceed to more complex ones, you will see the same pattern. So this results into a paragraph and the lists in our markup. So this is a simple table. You also see that we are invocating table elements, table rows, and table cells, and um, asserting some content there. 
and this results into a very simple table. Um, what else we can do is that we can inject basically any other language there. In this case, this is XML because we use XML markup, but this can be Markdown or ASCII doc as well. Um, you can, like in this case, it's an XML injection and we are just inserting the XML block there. And thanks to multi-line strings, completion, validation, quick fixes in XML, this actually looks almost like writing an actual XML. You get all the completions you can use, um, for example, um, expression, syntax uh, to, uh, you can use string interpolation here, like use some variables, for example. Um, so this works the same way as you will write something in XML. And um, this results to the procedure with its title and three steps. But you can ask, like, did you just change the angle brackets to curly brackets and that all you're trying to sell us? Um, the short answer is no, because it's actually not only curly brackets, but also some pluses and quotation marks. But actually, there are much more to that, which I want to tell you about. Uh, and I will um, take you through each of these points one by one. Uh, first one is separating data and its presentation. So we basically talk a lot about separation of content and presentation, and it existed like long before us, like in both web development and life-based markup languages, like use, like under this principle, like when visual and design aspects are separated from the actual structure and content of the document, and like it existed in web development with cascading style uh, sheets, and in lightweight languages also, we often say, separate the content from formatting. But with Scotland DSL, you can go further with it and separate the data from its presentation. So you can do something based on the data design. Um, so it's like the whole new level. Um, when you treat semantic elements that I've uh, shown you before, um, as, a, as a containers, and you add data to these containers, so we can change the data representation if you need, just editing the .kt file, like Kotlin file. For example, you can take data right from the application runtime, uh, right from the product, and so that it's always up to date, and then change the representation how it wanted to be like, for example, I want this data to be a paragraph, I want this to be a list, um, or what is, even more fascinating, you can use conditions to it. For example, um, we can make semantic markup dependent on the design data design. For example, if you receive this plain data, use a paragraph. And if you receive some deprecation information, make it a warning. So like the markup will be conditional. And one more like nice thing is that, for example, if data changed and the technical writer wasn't aware of this, if you add some um logic into your kotlin files when you are like processing these exceptions you will get the notifi notification as well so of course it's not like it's like a whole process uh substituted by this uh, you still need to communicate with developers and be aware of changes but this is like an additional check um which you can apply um so the second point is that you can do docs as code on a whole new level. Um, we often say like, when we say docs as code, um, sometimes we mean a limited amount of tools and practices that we apply uh, to docs that exist in the coding world. Like for example, code review, version control, linting, and so on. But like writing in tech, as we already largely copy the programming programming concepts, we can do it even more. Like we can use anything that is actually the development world created, like um, IDE support, like refactorings or some error checkings, validations. We can actually not use docs as code, but like docs are code. So with Kotlin DSL, um, you can make writing experience not look like you are writing code, but still has all the endless abilities of the programming language. So if you want them 
at some point you have a task to automate to make some conditional logic for example you can do this um wait what are you suggesting try to write code now like as the content is not enough we are busy enough when we are like preparing our content no but it's good to have a choice you can write using this invocation like just semantic elements and then if you have some tasks that you need to extend your docs with to automate some part, um, you can proceed to that. Uh, also, the nice advantage is that you can use practices brought to us by developers, like anything that modern IDEs provide to us is a refactoring, completions, dead and duplicated code detection, parameters, variables, um, changing visibility, like making some. Um, particular data, private, you can use it all. Um, but enough words, it's time to demonstrate um, an example that we prepared specifically for the API documentation. And what I will, the issue that we tried to solve is that one of the frequent issues of API documentation is that manual and generated parts live separately and in Kotlin DSL you can marry them so you can declare part of the elements manually and then reach with auto-generated data um, so we already have logic that parses JSON it's not complex um, just believe me it's about like 20 lines long um, and I will give you an, a, a code in the at the github so you can check um, you may ask fellow developer, or I ask more experienced technical writer, or you can ask ChatGPT to help you. Um, then we have a generation generation part when we use this parse data. Um, so this is how basically the whole file looks, but uh, you don't need your magnifying glass. I will show you everything uh, in more details. Um, so what we have here, first of all, we have a chapters like, uh, you see the for each um, cycle when we take each path and turn it into a chapter one like endpoint is one chapter with a title equals um, endpoint URL um, then what we uh, see here is we are assigning each HTTP verb with a colored tag uh, so it's like get post uh, put uh, delete once and what else we are doing is that we are even throwing an exception, like, I mean, like adults, like developers uh, actually do. Um, so in this case, if, if we received some unknown uh, HTTP method, we throw an, an exception. Um, what else we are doing is that we are injecting an XML part. So we are turning method, method summary and description, so textual information into a definition list um, in this case, like we're using definition list, which is like our common element for um, term definition type of content, like title and definition, or like question answer. I think it exists in some custom markdown flavors, but in case you're not aware, what is it? Just an element that represents term and definition. And what else we are doing? We are making a table where each row is a parameter, like parameter name, uh, parameter type and is it required um, and what else we're doing like each um, each actual parameter uh, is a table row as you see and we even have an if statement here when we are turning the boolean data like we receive is required um, as boolean like and we're turning it into textual one like yes or no and also we are adding an additional data so what we are doing is we are using this map of construction to add data that is not does not present in the initial data that we parse from the open api json um, so this can be anything like images for example but we are adding links to a conceptual documentation so for uh, some of the endpoints we are adding corresponding documentation in the conceptual part, not reference. So the main logic, like actual Kotlin scripts uh, is here, like this main function. Um, so from author's perspective, for me, it's just a Kotlin, like 
for me, it's just a RAM button, uh, if not digging into detail. Under the hood, it's a Kotlin script, which you can like you can run it even from a command line. Uh, I'm showing it in IntelliJ IDEA, so I'm, I'm basically just clicking this green run button and it will generate the result. Like you will see like it generates a chunk. We are specifying into which file we want to generate the content and where, like this is a region marked with uh, tags, generate content. It can be more complex example, like for example, a few, to a few files of documentation, a few regions with some conditional logic, but this example is very simple, like just one documentation file and one region. Um, so yeah, basically we are running it and what we get is um, between this um, region generated content tags, we are receiving all the data that we, like previously we uh, have written the logic for. Like as you see, we have um, chapter with a title equal to endpoint. We have a method type, um, like this post green color tag. Um, we have a, a definition list with just one definition, which is summary and description. We have a, um, a related content. And we also have like other, uh, like the same content. Um, what else we can do is that we can add like around this text, we can write any content manually and it won't be like wiped out. So you just add in some overview part, you can add some schemas, images, anything, and it will also go to the resulting HTML. So this is how result uh, how the, uh, it, it, it looks at the actual website. So you may see like, don't try to uh, catch all the like um, content. Uh, the point is just it's uh, 546 API methods and they are all like generated into the same structure, like with these parameter tables, with um, color tags and with like a, a links to additional documentation. Um, so yeah, the idea of generating HTML from code or XML from code existed long before. Um, we just trying to go further with it, where, like what we can do. Um, in PHP it existed and like it's a path to the true like um, declarative approach like with Android tried with Jetpack Compose UI versus Android XML layouts. Um, so this is not something new in the programming world, but we are just trying to develop this idea. But you will ask us why Kotlin, if it existed in many languages before? Um, first of all, because we are from JetBrains and Kotlin is developed inside JetBrains. This is Cody, which is a Kotlin mascot. Um, so we can be sort of biased with using Kotlin. Um, the second uh, point is that Kotlin is very pragmatic and easy enough for beginners. And one of the goals is that you, to make some day-to-day -day tasks something, um, you don't need to know some complex concepts like classes, public, static, void, or like string arguments. Um, you just develop like the, you're picking up the concepts throughout your like education journey. And the second point is that it has seamless integration with JVM ecosystem. So Java will soon be 30 years old. And during that time, a lot of super useful stuff has produced for every taste. So you can just use any um, JVM libraries there. And like Java helps Kotlin to be even more um, extensive. And the third part that I've been um, promising you to um, explain is extensibility. So since docs are now sort of a programming code, you can do whatever you want, or you can ask someone to help you with it. Like you can add any validations, loops, conditional string methods, anything. Um, and it, the only thing that can stop you is your imagination, or as we like to call it, Turing completeness. Uh, so everything that is basically possible on a computer is possible with Kotlin DSL and with docs. Um, so you can not only add some elements, you can change the principles of DSL itself. Of course, it's not necessary, but it's possible. 
Um, so you can use any development principles and concepts of like object-oriented programming, procedural, functional, anything. Um, so just a few points where you can go with it, what come up to our minds, but it can be more. So first of all, you can parse and integrate any format out there, like JSON, YAML, custom serialization formats. You can take objects from application runtime. Um, so this is a shift towards like declarative approach that we have seen with many UI frameworks. You can map any additional data there, add mappings right during the generation and enrich, like bring the data that does not present in the source. Um, you can use loops and conditional statements. You can, um, no need to like write a few line statements like uh, if, else, then, and all that. You can keep it plain in one liner as I have um, shown you in the example. And as the sources are regular Kotlin code now, it can leverage any of the existing JVM libraries so you can use, for example, I don't know, um, Apache Open NLP or readability analysis or, or anything like basically that come up into your mind. And since the documentation is code now, we can tightly integrate it with test cases, BDD frameworks, UI and API and testing tools. So you can do assertions and like basically test your documentation as well. But of course, it's not an like endless uh, honeymoon, and there is always pitfalls we need to consider. Uh, first of all, when I say like anything is possible, uh, to know that you can do something, you actually need to know is it is possible and how to do that. So you will need an assistance, um, just to if you don't know like how to approach your task. So any JVM programmer will help, can help you if you have one, or like fellow technical writers or community or chat GPT, but this is a pitfall, definitely. And the second one is like flexibility leads to even more fragmentation. Even inside chat brains, we have like a few implementation of the Kotlin DSL applied to docs. Um, so if we'll make it, for example, open source format, it can lead to the even more fragmentation, like everyone want to produce their own part of the language, like elements they want to have. So yeah, this is something we need to consider. Um, and one more thing that was particularly useful for me, and I hope it will be um, something you will experience as well, is that Kotlin helps you, Kotlin DSL helps you to start coding more smoothly because um, you are applying your coding tasks, uh, like these basic skills, to what you know the best, which is documentation. So you are an SME in documentation, and it's much better to pick up the con like these concepts, coding concepts, like first, like some simple ones, then more complex applying them into a documentation, not some, you know, synthetic examples like write hello world or count how many classmates has have some certain marks or something like that. So these, you know, um, examples that are you don't really relate to, but you relate to the documentation it's, and it's make, it makes it much more, um, much, much easier and I don't know, much smoother to learn uh, coding concepts through the documentation. So thanks. Have a nice Kotlin DSL. Um, let's stay in touch and come to the writer's side.